was 22 years old attending a Halloween party at my former best friend Nick's house, who died of the heroin overdose in 2013. Before his death, he would throw big Halloween parties every year at his house, as his parents routinely flew to New York every year to attend their own friend's party. He was always a big Halloween freak, so the whole house was littered with truly horrifying props that we all knew Nick spent way too much money on. He even put up giant walls of cardboard and covered them with wallpapers to create a haunted maze of sorts. I want to keep this a story PG-13 rated, so I'll skip the weed, beer, LSD and sex and get right to the part where things got bad. I'll admit we weren't in our right minds, none of us were. Anyone who came to Nick's parties knew what went down. Me, Nick and a few other guys, Vinny G, Joey and Q were upstairs in Nick's room smoking a bunk when we heard city loud bangs come from downstairs. Nick clumsily but panickingly rushed to open the door and see what was going on. There were sounds of a screaming of both guys and girls. I remember quite clearly it sounded as if there were a crowd of people screaming for their lives down there. We all called Nick to come back in and shut the door even under the influence of drugs. We all knew what was going on. Nick ran back inside and shut the door quickly, but also quietly locking it behind him. He turned to us and had on the facial expression of someone who had just witnessed murder. What did you see? What's going on? We all shouted at him and he told us to hide before anything else. We all knew why. From that point on, we didn't ask questions. Nick hit the lights and hid in the closet with Joey while I hid under the bed with Q and Winnie G hid in the storage box. We could hear the blasting music from downstairs tearing off, followed by a ground man screaming at everyone to shut up. One unfortunate girl let out a scream of shock and fear and after another bang, silence. The man started shouting at everyone again but personally I couldn't hear it too well and I certainly as hell wouldn't remember exactly what he was shouting. We heard two other men shouting. By now there were confirmed three intruders in the house, but there could have been more for all we know at that point. We heard the sound of boots stomping up the stairs and then coming halfway down the hall and stopping outside the bedroom door. The intruder on the other side of the door tried to doorknob, but when he realized it was locked, he started ramming into the door with most likely his shoulder. After a few failed attempts at that, the sound of a few shots to the doorknob were clearly enough to break the lock, allowing the door to swing open. We heard cries from downstairs after the shots to the doorknob followed by silence and gunshots. Me and Nick had our hands on our mouth to shield our breathing noises. I watched through the transparent cloth that hung from the bottom of Nick's bed as the black boots with overlapping raping denim jeans moved instinctively to the closet. He opened the door. I could hear Nick begging for the intruder not to kill him offering a generous amount of money. If they would leave, Nick gave himself up as the house owner. That's when the intruder ordered him downstairs. The rest of us stayed put. Apparently, Joey hadn't been caught with Nick. He stayed under the bed shaking and afraid. There was near silence from downstairs other than Nick talking with the intruders, but whatever they were saying was much too low for us to hear. It felt like an year, 20 minutes before the front door slammed shut and Nick came running back upstairs to tell us that they were gone. I think the most horrifying moment of my life was when I stepped downstairs back into the living room and saw the two dead bodies laying lifelessly on the ground, holes in their heads spewing out blood. Jen and Robbie. 
two good friends that I still miss. I'll spare you the details of what happened when the police arrived, but despite the fact that the house smelled like a marijuana greenhouse, the police were more interested in finding out who masked men were that killed two innocent college students. Oh yeah, Nikki told the four of us who were hiding in his room that there were four intruders in total, all wearing fedoras, vendetta masks, coats, and gloves. They demanded 100,000 in cash and when Nick could not provide it, they demanded he fill their empty sack with his most valued possessions. All the party goers held hostage in the room were also forced to throw their wallets into the sack where they would be shut. After the incident, Nick became depressed. He started drinking too much, becoming an alcoholic, stopped showing up to school and ultimately ended up dropping out. He started the use of heavier drugs such as meth and heroin. I had one good talk with him since the incident and he was more real during his talk than he had ever been. He told me with tears rolling down his cheeks and a pipe in his hand. He lived in constant pain, knowing they caused the death of two of his best friends. Nick died of a heroin overdose in July of 2013, not even a year after the incident. It was my first Halloween leaving my own house away from my parents. I live in a small corner house with a basement but no upstairs, house my parents pet half for. It was 11 o'clock at night, I was sitting in the living room watching scary Halloween movies, when I found myself getting up to answer a knock at the door. But then I stopped and thought, who could be at the door at 11 p.m.? Surely there were no more trick-or-treaters out, I had a pretty good feeling it was a late night Halloween ding-dong ditcher. So I gave it a second, then I shot a glance to the porch through the window. They were gone already. Yep, ding-dong ditcher. I sat back down not thinking twice about it, and again knocking at the front door. Get lost, I yelled. I was not in the mood for punky kids. They ignored my demands and started pounding now, not just knocking. I was pissed now and leapt up and swung the door open. That one was there once again. I slipped on my shoes and headed outside to begin searching the bushes for the kids. But there was nobody inside, not in the bushes, not behind my car, not across the street. I didn't want to feed into their fun anymore, so I went back inside, double locked the door and went to my bedroom, also walking that door just to feel safer, I guess. Even over the TV, I could still hear the stupid kids pounding on my front door repeatedly. I was so close to calling the cops to get them away, but that would undoubtedly lead to my house being egged or TP'd. The pounding continued for an uncomfortably long time, more than half an hour. I thought these kids must be filming something for YouTube and were desperate for a reaction. But I wasn't going to give it to them. At some point I dozed up with the TV on only to wake up to the knocking again. I looked at the clock, it was 2 in the fucking morning. How could those kids still be at it, I thought. I turned the TV off and sat out with my ears open. For a few moments my heart completely stopped, as I realized that knocking was not at my front door, but rather at my bedroom door. I jumped out of bed looking around my room like a madman for something to use as a weapon. They knew I was awake now, they were trying the doorknob trying to bust down the door. There weren't any kids. By some miracle, I came up with an idea. It was a long shot, but it was all I could think of. I turned on the receiver to my speaker system 
Plugged in my iPhone, brought up the YouTube app, typed in 45 gunshot sound effect. Turned down the volume and pressed play the sound of a gunshot echoed out of the speakers. It sounded real enough. I paused the video after the first shot and yelled. That was a warning shot. Leave now or I won't hesitate to shoot a new in the head. And it worked. I heard two pairs of footsteps stopping over my wood floors and out the front door. I gave it a moment before opening my bedroom door and peeking outside. They were gone, but the front door was left wide open. I quickly shouted, called the police, and that's where my story ended.